Hello friends, welcome to Moonspell Tarot. So today we are doing a pick a card reading, finding out who your future partner is. So this can go for those of you who maybe are already in a relationship and you want to find out if this person is going to be your lifelong partner, your lifelong spouse, or maybe you know someone or are friends with someone that you are interested in um, having a romantic relationship with. And I've had this requested to me quite a few times and I use the term partner just because some people don't get married or some people just like the term partner instead of like husband or wife but this could be for like a spouse too this is just referring to someone who's going to be your lifelong partner I just wanted to make it a little bit more open-ended for um you know a lot of different people right so we have three different piles here in front of us. I also have my pendulum, so we will be consulting that as well within your reading. And again, there will be timestamps down below, as always, in the description box whenever you're ready to go ahead and jump to your reading, okay? So for pile number one, we have a Labradorite. For pile number two, we have a Bloodstone. And then for pile number three, we have an Opalite. So you could go off of like the look of your favorite crystal, the color of the crystal, if you um, you know have a favorite number, something like that, whichever way um, is most comfortable for you, whichever pile is most resonating with you, go ahead and choose that one, okay? So let's go ahead and take a nice good deep breath and then I will give you all a few moments to choose which crystal best fits you and then I will see you down at your reading, so. Welcome back, pile number one. So this is if you chose this Labradorite. So before I jump into the cards, I just wanted to remind you to hit that subscription button down below. If you're not already subscribed, I do daily pick a cards and daily Zodiac readings as well. So if you're interested in that type of thing, please hit that subscription. And then also, if you are interested in booking a personal reading with me, all of that information will be in my description box, okay? So let's go ahead and see if you know your future partner. Okay, so we have the Tower, all right, Queen of Pentacles, the Lovers, okay, you have a lot of intense cards <laughs> so far, okay, Faith, Seventh House Partners, Balanced Spirituality and Practicality, and then patience. Okay, so let's look at our tarot first because that's going to give us a really great look at what we are trying to figure out first. So let's see. So what I'm feeling 
is that I feel like you potentially do know this person uh, just because I feel like right now I definitely see that you've gone through some sort of struggle obviously with the tower so that is like a really big tell as to like what you are you know going through mentally you know things that have happened to you in the recent past you know I I feel like you've gone through some sort of heartbreak um, you know maybe you were in a relationship before and it just hasn't worked out for you um, but I feel like you have somebody on the side who is admiring you somebody on the side who knows that you know you can be happy um, somebody knows that they can make you happy right so I definitely do see that, you know, I do really feel like you know this person uh, just by taking a quick glance at your cards. Uh, but I feel like, like right now you're going through like a really intense struggle. And so maybe you were kind of like hoping that the person that you stopped dating was your future partner or the person that hurt you was going to be like your future life partner, right? But, you know, I do feel like it's somebody else. I don't think that it's this person that hurt you. I feel like that that person is gone, you know, out of your life. Let them go, you know, especially if I feel like a really tremendous amount of pain um, coming from like the tower. I just am really getting like a vibe of like somebody really hurt you. Somebody was, you know, not doing the right thing by you. But, you know, I do think that there is somebody that does care and somebody that looks at you in that way of like admiration. They really think that you are, you know, an awesome person. They really care about you. And so I do feel like that those feelings of admiration are going to turn into love. So, you know, we pulled the lovers for you, which is great. You know, that is like a sign of like a soulmate, a true love, somebody that you are going to be with. So, you know, I feel like you potentially maybe even know who it is. Like, when you're really thinking about it, I think that you see the signs of, you know, maybe a friend that really does care or, you know, maybe even somebody that you work with that you kind of, you might, you know, already have those feelings for as well, but you already, you know, you realize that this person does care about you and that they, you know, they want to be with you. So, um, you know, I feel like this person is trying to give you space, like they don't want to, you know, like move in and start like trying to um, like conceive a relationship right off the bat. I feel like they are trying to, you know, like um, give you space because I think that they know that you have been um, struggling and that you're really sad. But I do feel like this person is admiring you from afar in a way they they really do care about you and I think it really pains them to see you in this you know this type of pain and this type of situation so you know I do feel like this person is really present in your life like I said somebody you know maybe like a work friend that you see very often uh, something like that a friend even that you just have in your regular everyday life as well but I do definitely see that right now you're just going through a lot of pain, a lot of frustration. Um, but you do have somebody who really admires you and thinks that you are great. So, you know, that's a really beautiful thing. And, you know, even pulling the lover's card, I do feel like once this situation does like cultivate and you do end up, um, you know, being with this person romantically, I feel like it's going to be like, you're going to wonder why you waited so long, why you never noticed this person before, because I do feel like it's going to be a very powerful and very, um, you know, strong relationship. So first, let's talk about patience. So I feel like with your situation, because I'm feeling like right now you are just really in a lot of pain. I feel like you are in a lot of hurt uh, by, you know, a previous relationship ending um, you know, depending on how that was, I do feel like it was a very painful, you know, relationship for you. So I feel like you went through a lot of struggle in that way. But, you know, I do feel like that this new relationship is going to come for you, but it definitely takes some patience. And it's, I feel like because you two do have a very like powerful connection, I do also think that it's good to wait for it. 
it's good to allow this situation to unfold as it's going to unfold, as it should naturally happen, and not force it. Because I feel like if you're receiving these messages, I do feel like it can potentially fill your heart and make you feel really good, which is great and wonderful. But also, I think it's important to give it time and don't force it. Because I feel like often when we are fresh out of a relationship and feeling really sad, we often go for like a rebound kind of person. And I think that they may spoil this love that you two have because you're not fully past, you know, this past relationship. So, you know, I do feel like giving it time and allowing these emotions to unfold naturally, like, you know, as you're learning to get over this past person, um, spending time with this, you know, new person in your life, um, you know, making an extra effort to like be around them more. Um, if you work with this person, you know, maybe, you know, go on lunch break with them a lot, like spend more time with this person, offer to spend time with them outside of work. So they know, and you know, that, you know, you are interested in them. So, you know, just give it time. I do feel like that it, this is going to be a very beautiful relationship. But again, I do feel like it's going to take patience and time to allow this to really like unfold. And we also have faith. So again, just having faith that this, you know, this situation is going to work out in your favor, having faith in the universe, you know, when you are conspiring for something to happen, when you are manifesting and putting all of like your good um, um, uh, energy and emotions into something, the universe is going to conspire to make it happen for you. And so I do feel like it is so important to have faith and don't, you know, like, of course, right now, it's okay to um, feel sad and feel brokenhearted over this relationship that ended. And it's okay to mourn still, you know, and still feel sorry for it. Because, you know, that is an important time of your life that you did put effort into. So it's okay to still feel sad. And, um, you know, it's okay to go through those emotions, but also like having faith that you are going to find someone who's going to make you happy. And, you know, I do feel like you already know this person. So, you know, just continue to keep your hopes up. And I really do feel like this relationship is going to fold out in a way that's going to make you very happy and this person happy and really like give you a lot of fulfillment and, um, you know, this person I feel like is really going to be like your life partner. And then we also have balanced spirituality and practicality, full moon in Pisces. So I feel like because this person, um, you know, they were able to still care about you and love you, even when you were in a previous relationship, I feel like that they were understanding of, you know, your hardships and the things you went through and they weren't just being like, overly jealous and overly um, frustrated with the situation because I think that they are like manifesting this relationship with you as well. So they, you know, they ultimately want you to be happy. So they are, you know, trying to manifest this relationship and also allow it to like unfold naturally. Right. So, you know, um, I feel like it's so important for you. And I think this person is working on this as well to balance spirituality and practicality. So again, you you already know in your heart that there is some emotional connection between your, you know, you and this person. And I feel like it's so important to know that you know, you and this person are going to be together and you're going to work for a relationship with that, but also be practical about it and give yourself time to get over this so it doesn't just turn into a rebound situation. Because like I said, I do feel like if it's a rush situation, it's going to turn out in not a beneficial manner to you and you're going to be sad. And also, like I said, because I do feel like this person was able to be understanding and wait for you and um, kind of like admire you from afar, I do feel like... Um, some Pisces energy and maybe even like cancer or very heavy water in this person's chart. Um, because that is something that like a Pisces especially will do is kind of admire from afar, but maybe not say anything. Um, because I think that they already appreciate the relationship that you two have and they don't want to ruin it by being, 
you know, maybe like over for flirtatious or ruin it by saying something when there's no mutual feeling. So, you know, I do feel like this person could potentially be a Pisces or have heavy Pisces in their chart uh, because they do, um, you know, they are wanting to like admire you from afar, but they also do really want like a relationship with you at some point. And lastly, we have partners. So again, you know, I do feel like that you all are going to be really great partners. I feel like this relationship is so beautiful and it's not even started yet. Um, you know, I do feel like you all are going to have a very positive, a very loving relationship. And unfortunately, right now, I feel like you're just going through like a big struggle, a very big frustration in your life. And so it's really hard for you to see that right now. But, you know, I do feel like this person really does greatly care and really wants to be with you. And so I feel like you all are going to be, you know, a really great, powerful relationship. Like pulling the lovers and partners, I feel like is a very big, um, is a very big tell to how your relationship is going to be. And I think it's going to be very beautiful, very, um, you know, fulfilling to both of you, right? So let's go ahead and do our pendulum just to, you know, kind of clarify and just make sure that we are uh, correct with spirit and in one with spirit. So I'm going to ask it just a couple really quick questions to make sure that it's in tune, and then we will ask your questions. So show me yes. Okay, so yes is back and forth. Show me no. Okay, and no is in a circle. Do I have a black cat? Yes, okay. Do I have a white cat? No, okay. For pile number one, did they already know their partner, their future partner, their future spouse? Yes, okay. For pile number one, do they want to be with this person? Do they have a sexual attraction to them? No. Will they gain a sexual attraction to them? Yes. Okay, so I do feel like maybe you weren't really fully attracted to them yet, but I do feel like it's going to uh, grow over time, and then the pendulum is agreeing. Okay. Will pile number one be with this person for a long time? Yes. Will their love be strong? Yes. Okay, so, you know, I do feel like that this relationship is going to be... Um, very beautiful, very emotional. I think you two are going to be just like perfect for each other. Um, you know, just allow this relationship to play out. Allow yourself to mourn the loss of this relationship that you're in, or maybe it's ending soon and you know it. Um, you know, just give yourself time. And I do feel like it's going to form and be really like amazing and beautiful for you. So thank you so much, and I hope you all enjoyed this reading. If you liked it or it resonated with you, please give me a thumbs up down below. And again, if you're interested in booking a personal reading with me, all of that information will be in my description box. So thank you so much, and I hope you all have a great day. Welcome back, pile number two. So this is if you chose this bloodstone. So before I jump into the cards, I just wanted to remind you to hit that subscription button down below. If you're not already subscribed, um, I put out daily pink cards and daily zodiac readings if you're interested in that type of thing. And also if you're interested in booking a personal reading with me, all that information will be in my description box as well. So let's go ahead and see if you know this uh, future partner of yours, if you already know this person. Okay, so we have four of wands. Four of Swords. Okay, interesting. Okay, Wheel of Fortune reversed. All right. Harmony. Aries, I am. Hold your vision. And travel. All right, so let's look at our tarot first just to get a good you know, idea of what is going on here, and then we will look at our oracles next. Okay. So, let's see. So, just kind of like glancing at your cards already, you know, I feel like that you are going through like a very 
you know, a sad moment in your life. I feel like that you are struggling with love. I feel like that you really, um, you know, you desperately want to find love. You want to find something that's going to be true and long lasting and somebody that you could really like confide yourself in. Um, and you're just, I feel like that that is something that's always on your mind. It's something that you feel like in the pit of your stomach. I feel like it definitely really, um, you know, hurts you and makes you very sad. So, you know, I am seeing that, you know, it's, it's something that you have really like guarded your heart in as well. Um, with four of swords. So I feel like you are kind of like you want love, but also you are guarding yourself too much from it. And this could come from you being like hurt in a past relationship or, um, you know, maybe if you had a, like a harder childhood where you're just like not trusting of other people, I feel like you definitely have a hard time trusting others in your relationship. You have a hard time, um, giving yourself to somebody in a way that is showing that you trust them. And, you know, I feel like because of that, as of right now, I don't feel as if you know your life partner. And that's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. You still have, you know, time to find somebody. But, you know, I do feel like that the person, if you are seeing somebody or, um, you know, if you are like interested in someone, I'm feeling like they may not be your life partner because I don't feel like you've met this person yet. And the reason for that is because, you know, again, I feel like you're keeping your heart very guarded where you are not really able to, um, you're not really able to fully give yourself to somebody. So if you are seeing somebody uh, right now, I feel like you haven't really fully, um, given your all to this person. I feel like that you've held back in a way. And, you know, maybe you see that in the relationship. Maybe you see that, like, closeness isn't there. But I feel like for many of you, and, you know, this reading is for, like, a wide audience, so if it doesn't personally resonate with you, that's okay. But, you know, I do feel like for many of you that are single and are having, you know, a hard time finding someone, I feel like it's mainly just because you are having trouble, you know, putting yourself out there. You're having trouble um, giving yourself to somebody in a way that is um, showing that you care because that is a big part of a relationship is being vulnerable and talking about your emotions and the way you feel about somebody. And I feel like because of that, a lot of people don't know the real you. And I think a lot of people, you know, even if you're like meeting somebody and you may be interested in dating them, I feel like that they, they kind of see that front from you. And so they are, you know, not really wanting to like invest their time and their love and their heart into somebody who is not being real with them. So, you know, I do feel like for many of you, you do not know your partner. Um, you know, I just feel like right now love hasn't really been on your side. Um, and let's look at your Oracle just to kind of, um, you know, see what else we can find out. So one thing that is very important for you to remember right now is that you are, you know, capable of love. You're deserving of love. You are a good person. So, you know, I'm feeling like that because you've gone through some traumatic relationships regarding love, you know, um, maybe some like really severe heartbreak and you're just not ready to really like give yourself to somebody else. Um, you know, often I hear that some people are afraid to get in relationships because growing up their parents fought very often in this. So they're like worried about falling into that same situation. So, you know, I do feel like it is so important for you to allow yourself to, you know, be in love and also like accept yourself. You know, I feel like that's so important and that's really hard for a lot of people to be accepting of what they've been through and also um, still try to like be a good person from it. I feel like many people really struggle with that and it can be very hard because like, you know, you want to be yourself, you want to put yourself out there, but you really struggle with it because you think maybe people won't approve of you or people won't like you for who you are. So, you know, I think that for you, it's very important to take that like Aries mentality that I am who I am deal with it. If you don't like it, 
then you could bugger off, right? So that is very important, and it's important to take that and, you know, um, really learn to be yourself and be accepting of yourself. So while you are, you know, if you can embark on this self-discovery journey, I feel like that's something that you are maybe like trying to start doing. You're trying to find the courage to do that. Um, allow yourself that time to say it's okay. Um, you know, do kind things for yourself if you're able to, um, you know, like do face masks at night and relax. Um, just do things that make you feel good. Wear clothes that make you feel good. Um, do things for yourself, whatever that is that's going to make you feel better and going to raise your self-awareness. Also, like, you know, like I said, every day make sure that you wear something that you like that makes you feel good. That's so important to make sure that you are you know, being positive to yourself and being good to yourself because many of us don't do that. So, you know, make sure that you're just really like being good to yourself in general. And um, next we have harmony. So I feel like in your life, you are really just like looking for harmony. You're looking for happiness. You, you know, you desperately want to find somebody that you can be together with and like enjoy your life together. And you know, I feel like you are kind of pushing that away, um, not really on purpose, but, you know, just it's something that you've done for so long that you have a hard time, um, you have a hard time grasping onto yourself, and so you have a hard time um, getting somebody else because you have to be your own cheerleader before someone else is your cheerleader, right? So you have to love yourself before you can love someone else. So I feel like that is so important and I feel like you are just wanting this harmony and this, you know, this love in your life. So I feel like it's important to find that inner harmony and that inner um, well-being and just like feeling good about yourself in general. So, you know, like I said, continue to work on yourself. Do small things for yourself every day that make you feel good. Um, you know, give yourself a positive affirmation every day in the morning. One way I personally do that is by like, I keep an oracle deck in my bedroom, and so in the morning before I get up, I will pull up, like, an oracle deck. It's, like, um, a love and positivity one. I'll actually leave some uh, different ones that I like in the description if you're interested in that. That is a good way to wake up and give yourself a positive affirmation from the universe. Um, also, like I said, just doing small, like, things for yourself that make you feel good, that make you feel beautiful, that just help you live your life in a more positive way. So, you know, that's a really great and positive thing to do for yourself. So I would definitely, you know, work on that. And then also, um, I see travel. So this can be really beneficial for you as well for maybe some of you who haven't really been out of your comfort zone in terms of like, where you go in your life. So travel can refer to like actually traveling and going to like other places and meeting new people uh, getting out of your comfort zone that way. And also traveling in, you know, this context can mean just going out and doing things that you normally wouldn't do. So if you are like, you know, maybe like into something very specific, like, I don't know, like book reading, if you like to read a lot or video games or movies or something like that, or music, go to events in your area that they're going to be talking about stuff like that. So like, um, you know, like there's a, um, <clears throat> pardon me, there is a bar in my area that holds like movie trivia nights and a lot of people go to that. That's a really great opportunity to meet somebody. Um, so, you know, if you're into something, like if you really like, you know, Harry Potter or something like that, uh, you know, you can go to like events or if you really like music, go to live music events and that is opening up your opportunity to meet more people because I feel like in a way you kind of close yourself off from a lot of people you don't really trust a lot of people even regards of like friends so you have a hard time inviting people into your life and so I feel like you know actually traveling could be beneficial for you going and meeting new people in other places that can help and also just learning to embrace your life and live life to your fullest and you know go to events and meet new people and kind of broaden your social circle and that's also going to help invite love into your life. And lastly, you have hold your vision, fixed moon. Okay, so this is also important because I feel like 
in your mind, you are like manifesting a positive relationship. I feel like that you want to, you want to be with somebody. You want to be happy. You want to find someone in your life who is going to benefit you. And so make sure that you're holding onto that vision and holding it to your heart. Because in turn, like we talked about with um, the Four of Swords, I feel like that in a way you are kind of like blocking this from happening by your actions. You know, if you're out and about and you meet somebody, you know, maybe you're not being very friendly with them, someone who may be interested in you. So make sure that you're holding on to that vision. And even sometimes if it's uncomfortable and hard, try to, you know, be more open with people, even if it's not necessarily in like a romantic context. Even if you're at the grocery store and like the lady behind you is trying to have a conversation where maybe you wouldn't really talk that much back. Try to be more open with people so you'll eventually feel more comfortable about it and you will, you know, want to invite more people into your life and eventually find this love. Because I do feel like by pulling the Hold Your Vision card, I do feel like you will find somebody. It's just going to take some time. It's going to take some self-love, some self-acceptance on your part. And I do feel like you will definitely, you know, find somebody in your life. So let's do the pendulum as well, just to, you know, affirm what we are seeing in this reading. So I'm just going to ask it a couple really quick questions to make sure that it is in tune with me. And then we will ask your questions. Okay, so show me yes. Okay, so yes is back and forth. Show me no. Okay, and no is a circle. Does pile number two know their future partner? No. Will they meet a future partner in the in the future? <laughs> I worded that badly. Will they meet the love of their life? Yes. Does pile number two need some self-love? Yes. Okay, so, you know, I do feel like, again, um... It just really takes some positivity on your behalf. I feel like you just desperately need some self-love, some self-care. And I do feel like eventually you will find somebody, and it might not even be that far away. It could be somebody in the very, you know, recent future. I just feel like it really depends. I'm feeling on your own personal journey and how long it takes you to get there. So, you know, continue to work on yourself, continue to love yourself. And I do feel like this person is just going to stumble into your life without you even realizing. So thank you so much for watching this reading. I really appreciate it. If you liked it or resonated with you, please give me a thumbs up down below. And again, if you're interested in booking a personal reading with me, all of that information will be in the description box. So thank you so much and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye. Welcome back, pile number three. So this is if you chose this opalite. So before I jump into the cards, I just wanted to remind you to hit that subscription button down below. If you are not already subscribed, I do daily pick a cards and I do daily zodiac readings as well. If you are interested in that type of thing. And also if you're interested in booking a personal reading with me, all of that information will be in my description box down below. Okay, so let's see if you already know your future partner or your future spouse. Okay, so we have King of Swords, Six of Swords, the Emperor Reversed, okay, Centering, Taurus I have, Luck is on your side, New Moon in Sagittarius, and Imagination, okay. So let's look at your tarot first, just to kind of see what is going on with you, and then we will look at the oracles next, okay? All right. So let's see. Let's look at this one first. So I feel like you have somebody in your life that you really do admire, and I'm feeling like right now, just from like their perspective, I... I feel like they're not fully like ready for a relationship and that could be for various reasons. You know, maybe they are like really focused on their job or, um, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people couldn't be ready. And I feel like that this person right now is not ready. Um, even though they may have like an interest in you, you know, they might find you attractive. Um, 
really like your personality, things like that. But I feel like ultimately this person is just not ready for like a commitment right now. They're not ready um, to be in a relationship. And they, um, I feel like that that may cause a bit of like a strife between you two, especially if you are like friends or um, if you two like work together and there has been some sort of like romantic exchange or an exchange of like feelings already. I feel like it may have caused a little bit of like upset between you two or maybe um, you both feel kind of like stressed about the situation that you are not, um, you know, talking as much. So, you know, I do feel like in a way this person's heart is guarded. You know, I think that, you know, maybe they've been in like a a bad relationship in the not so distant future or not so distant past, I mean. And, um, you know, I feel like that they are just not ready and you know, maybe right now, like I said, they're really focusing on their career or something like that, but I just feel like they're not fully ready for a relationship. And, um, you know, so their heart is very guarded. They're not ready to fully reach out and be with somebody yet. And it's something that I think in a way it makes you very sad because I feel like you do have a very strong attraction to this person, but you know, again, I just feel like they're not ready. And so, you know, obviously ultimately that is up to you if you want to wait for this person, um, I do feel like they're worth waiting for because I do feel like they care about you. But, you know, if you don't want to wait for them to get past this situation, but, you know, I just, I feel like they're just not ready. Um, but I do feel like this person is important for you. So, or important in your life rather. And also with like six of swords, you know, I feel like this person, they are wanting to so badly let go of this situation that they're in. They don't want to hold on to these negative emotions anymore. They are trying as best as they can to let them go. Not just for like the potential of another relationship, especially with you. I feel like that they also want to let go of it themselves because, you know, it's hard for them to feel this way. They are really struggling with these emotions. And so I feel like this person is trying as best as they can to let it go. You know, I feel like they may even be doing some things that aren't necessarily, uh, you know, the best way to let go of a situation, maybe like really heavy drinking or something like that, um, partying a lot just to kind of forget what they went through and kind of like put it at the back of their mind for the night, you know. Um, but, you know, I do feel like this person is going through a really big struggle in that way. They feel very frustrated. They want to move on so badly. And I think that also because they do feel like some sort of like a romantic connection with you, it's frustrating because they feel like they can't move on. And it could just be, like I said, um, you know, a really big hurt that just added a lot of emotions to them and added a lot of like really bad feelings. And so they have a hard time trusting, you know, so I definitely do feel like this person is really struggling with their emotions right now. So something that I feel like could benefit both of you and also, um, you know, something that you could kind of talk to them about in a way that they may understand, um, is centering. So this is really important for really everybody to do, but especially when you are going through a struggle in life, it's really important to center yourself. So, and like ground yourself, um, you know, and maybe like for you, this could involve like you learning to be patient. So centering yourself as in like, um, you know, there's a lot of ways to do it. You could stand in the shower and let the hot water roll over you. Um, often standing outside, like in your backyard or something with like bare feet on the ground, on like the grass, um, just like taking like deep breaths and allowing the negative energy to leave your body and come back in, uh, you know, letting in positive energy. Um, you know, there's several ways to do it. And I feel like even just helping this person in a way of like, even just going for like a walk and allowing them to kind of talk about their feelings, you know, maybe just like offering to, you know, talk with this person that can also kind of help center you in a way because you're learning to let go of like those negative vibes. You're allowing them to like leave your body and enter in positivity. So that could also be something you don't necessarily have to call it that, especially if this person, you know, maybe isn't, um, spiritual in any way or something like that. But, you know, going for a walk, um, 
allowing this person just to like talk out their feelings, maybe going on like a, you know, a little lunch outing or lunch date with them could help a lot. So, you know, allowing this person to just like get out that negative emotions. And that's also showing them that you care and that you, you know, they, you want them to be well in their mind. So that can also be very beneficial to you and help you out a whole lot. And next we are going to look at luck is on your side. So I do feel like this person is going to come around to you being um, here for them and that you care about them. I feel like it is like right there for them that they know that you care and it's it's just something that they haven't fully grasped onto. And I think that they care about you as well, but their mind is so muddled with these feelings of frustration, which everybody goes through, so that's okay, but... I feel like they're just having a hard time moving past it. So, but I definitely do feel that, you know, love is on the mind. Luck is there for you on your side. I do feel like, you know, allowing this person to get out some of their negative emotions. Um, you yourself also kind of grounding yourself. And if you want to wait for this person to be patient, um, you know, allowing yourself to ground yourself and allow yourself to you know, get out your emotional feelings as well so you could be centered and emotionally balanced. You know, I do feel like luck is coming to you. I feel like you're manifesting this relationship. And so I feel like it is so close for you. And then we also have, I have. So again, that is just signifying to me that this relationship is going to be beautiful. It's going to you know, it's going to add a lot of benefit to your life. And also just with, you know, using the term I have, I feel like it's important to manifest exactly what you want. So saying, you know, to yourself while you're grounding in the hot shower, standing outside, I want to be with this person. I want them to love me. I want to love them. I want our life to be great together. I want to be in love with this person. Just basically like telling the universe exactly what you want so it can come back and help you. And I feel like that's going to benefit you so much to turn this situation from, you know, I wish this person would get over it. I wish that they would, you know, be with me and realize that I love them too. I know that me and this person will be together at one point. So just changing your mindset is going to, I feel like, make a really big difference. And it's also like helping you get past this situation because I feel like it does also kind of like stress you out in a way because you really do care about this person. And in a way, it makes you very sad that they haven't really been fully, you know, been able to like open up to you in that way. And lastly, we have imagination. So I feel like also with this card, this is very helpful because using your imagination to, you know, show this person that you care and that you, um, you know, you want to be with them can be beneficial. So obviously starting off with something small, like I said, maybe going on like a small walk with this person or a lunch date, whatever your situation is like that you all would probably feel comfortable doing, you know, invite them and allow them to kind of speak their mind freely and let out that negative energy. Um, also, you know, just doing small, kind things for this person to show that you care. So make sure you're using your imagination in that way. If you know this person likes something very specific, like, you know, maybe like a certain type of candy or a type of movie or book or music or something like that, get them like a little small gift, you know, as you all open up to each other. And I feel like that that is definitely going to be returned back to you. So, you know, I feel like it's so important to just do kind things for this person. And in turn, I feel like they are going to see that you two are meant to be together. So let's uh, pull out our pendulum as well. I'm just going to ask it a couple really quick questions to make sure it is in tune with me. And then we will go ahead and ask your questions. Okay. So show me yes. Okay. So yes is back and forth. Show me no. Okay, and no is a circle. Okay, so do I have a black cat? Yes. Do I have a white cat? No. Okay. For pile number three, do they already know their partner? Yes. Can pile number three and this person be happy together? Is this person going through an intense life struggle? Yes. Does power number or pile number three have the emotional power to, you know, forgive what happened and let this person go and 
um, you know, learn to love pile number three. Yes. Okay. So, you know, again, I do feel like this person does care. I feel like in the back of their mind, they know this is what they want, but I feel like they just really struggle with some emotional feelings and they struggle with letting things go. So, you know, obviously it's up to you if you feel like you want to be with this person and you feel like it's worthwhile. I do feel like that this would be a very beneficial relationship for you. So thank you so much for watching this reading. I really appreciate it. If you liked it or it resonated with you, please give me a thumbs up down below. And again, if you're interested in booking a personal reading with me, all the information will be in my description box. So thank you so much and I hope you have a great day.